Oh man, this is going to be interesting. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Road to Pro. Today we're going to talk about something completely different. Today is going to be about adapting to new tables. So a lot of times you'll find yourself at a bar, at a friend's house, somewhere that has a totally different table than the table you're used to playing on. Maybe you travel overseas. Maybe in the United States, we play on Tornado, Warrior, sometimes Bonzini if you're from like the North Carolina area. But over in France, they play on Bonzini. Over in Italy, they play on Garlando. They play on different tables all over the country. Wherever you end up, you have to attempt to adapt to that play style, that table, the difference in men, the difference in playing surface, the difference in ball. Today, we have a little bit of a treat. El Jimidor, which is a tequila company, has, is running a foosball tournament here in Chicago, and tonight are the preliminary matches. I just so happen to get an invite with my partner, Mikey B, and we're going to be heading down and competing in this event. If we win our matches tonight, we move on to compete in the finals for $5,000. So hopefully, we can compete tonight and move on. But in the meantime, we have to figure out how, how to adapt to a table we've never played on before, with balls we've never used before, in a playing arena with new rules, new table surface, smaller table, smaller goals, smaller men. You get the point. There's going to be a lot of factors that kind of come together to allow for us to possibly succeed or possibly fail. It's all going to depend on what happens tonight. But, I think adaptation to these tables is going to be key. Our normal shots aren't going to work, our normal game plans aren't going to work. There's going to be a lot of on-the-fly play, and a lot of trying to figure out things while the game moves on. So now, I'm waiting for Mikey B., and we're going to travel downtown Chicago. So we're here at Chicago Football, uh, downtown Chicago, playing on some really rough tables. But um, needless to say, they're playable. I mean, not easily, but they're playable. Uh, you have to learn to adapt to the situation, and in this type of situation, you have limited options. So you can't really pin the ball, the ball's really slick, you have to be extremely precise about how you play. So, for these types of situations, you have to scale your game back. Really scale it back to the basics. Simple series, simple passes, simple shots, don't try anything tricky. Control the ball at all times. And say hi to Rich when you walk outside, that's, that's step two. So hi to YouTube, Rich. Hi, YouTube, Rich. <laughs> All right, guys, it's gonna be hard to hear me, but I'm gonna do my best. So on a table like this, the men don't have good group feet. The ball is completely wacky. Um, but what you can try and do is be very careful with it. Even the table is not even close to level. But you have to try and do what you can with the ball while you can. So when passing, keep it real subtle, real basic. Make it real slow and try and do the best that you can. Then, you can even do wall passes and everything like normal, but you have to really kind of make it simple. It's going to be the only way that you can do well on a table like this and constantly try and grab loose balls. It's going to be tough, but when you get it down, you can really start to make things happen. With the shots, it's going to be difficult. Setting the ball up is almost impossible. So do what you can to try and get the ball in its close to place its position. That's about as good as you can get it on this table. And when you shoot, make it deliberate. Don't try and make it simple. Or don't try and make it difficult. And don't try and overpower the ball. These rods are so loose and the rods are so bent that it's very difficult to really try and execute and do your normal game. But if you simplify your game, you're really going to be able to have a whole lot more fun and be able to do a lot more on the table. Alright guys, so basically 
we have proceeded to the next round. You'll see the matches in the next couple of days. Uh, I have recorded them for you. But basically, you have to change your game, and you'll see it in these matches, so that you can play on other tables. On other tables that you're not used to, make it simple. Don't try and pin the ball as much. Try and stay behind it, opposed to pinning it. When you pin it, you often will lose it because you're not used to the length of the guy. The length of the guy is gonna change dramatically on every table. So when you're trying to make all of the adjustments, make them minor, start slow at first. Don't pin the ball. Try and stay behind it and just keep it corralled in your zone. If you have a two bar, three bar, just make sure you keep the ball in your possession. Try and really capitalize on every possession that you get. When you do that, you're gonna find that you can do much better in those matches. Everybody, thanks for watching another episode of Road to Pro. Stop, just stop for a second. Just stop. As I'm recording this video, I realize a couple things. One, there isn't a lot of content. It was very difficult to get on the tables and to really practice and do things while also trying to record matches, do all that kind of stuff. My dogs don't want me to shoot a YouTube video right now. But the reason adaptation to different tables is so important is so that you can be victorious and you're gonna see a lot of that in the matches that I post over the next couple days there's really it's hard to explain but working and practicing on difficult tables actually helps your game improve you have to find the subtle things that allow for you to use your game on a table that doesn't want you to use your game you have to you know forget the basics forget the things that I've taught you in other videos and think about the absolute fundamentals think about okay how can I hit the ball with power without breaking this table without doing what I normally need to do how can I find new and inventive ways to get the ball in the hole when the table isn't made for tournament play it's a fun table it's essentially a Kmart special table it's not meant for anything but little kids to play on. But when holding a tournament for $5,000, you've got to find ways to do well. On this table, I found that a lot of my normal things wouldn't work. But by lifting up on the rod instead of down, I was able to actually allow for my wrist to proceed through with the full motion. But not everything's always like that. Every table is going to be a little bit different, which you can and can't do. The matches that I'm going to be showing you over the next couple days are the two matches that we played, and we did very well. But you're going to see why we did very well, I think. Pay close attention to the subtleties of the, t of the matches. Rags are easier for people to score. The player competition isn't incredible, but they're pretty darn good for not being tournament foosball players. Being a tournament foosball player gives us a big advantage in something like this. But in these few matches, we're not playing other tournament players. We're playing essentially bar players. But you'll see what I mean. Look at the subtleties. Look at what we can't do. The rules don't allow for us to even attempt to shoot a rollover. Um, you know, the normal rules don't apply to this tournament at all. They're their own custom rules that only apply to this. You have to adapt. You have to learn creative ways to win the matches. You actually have to do this at many foosball tournaments that you go to on good tables. Not every table is going to play the same. So keep that in mind and let's roll the outro. If you like this video, please make sure you hit the like button down below, comment on the video, and subscribe to my channel. Helps a lot. Really appreciate it. Till next time everybody, happy foosin'.